back and relax and, and not participate. I'm sorry, I am going to make you work, but hopefully you'll, you'll get something that you can take back to your classroom right away and use and that you'll enjoy your time with me. So yay, I love that you love vocabulary and literacy. I am going to drop that. Um, so the bit.ly link. So please um, click on that. Um, I'm also going to advance my little slides here. Maybe if my slides will advance. Hmm. Ah, there we go. So there we go. Now, now I've got the slides. <laughs> You know, technology is sometimes our friends and sometimes not. So I am coming to you live and in person from Anaheim, California. I'm at the National Convention for Teachers of English, which is um, so much fun for me because I get to meet so many great authors. I'm kind of a, a big fangirl of all these authors. And so I'm having a lot of fun, but I um, I'm excited to do this Nevada Rises to the Top too. It's kind of fun. I get to do both things today. Um, so here's our goals, and I want you to open up the note taker. So thumbs up if you got your note taker open. Uh oh. All right. So good luck with the two devices. Hope that works for you. All right. So thumbs up if you got that your note taker. So I, note taker. Okay. Um, I will put it in the chat one more time. Oops. I don't want to. Everyone in meeting. There we go. The note taker should be up there one more time. All right. Um, so open up that note taker. I'd like you to take a minute and write down a personal outcome, like what you would like to get out of this session, what you're hoping for. Um, I'm hoping what I hope for you is that you'll understand the what, why, and how of purposeful vocabulary instruction. Um, you'll understand the components of vocabulary, um, why it's so important. Um, we'll review a few effective instructional strategies and give you some tools that'll help you get a little more bang for your buck. And we'll talk about ways to implement effective technology for enhancing your vocabulary instruction because we're all about technology, right? We have to use it. <laughs> all right. So here's what I need from you. Um, I'm going to skip down all the way down to the bottom, right? at the beginning, presume positive intentions. And I stole this from another presenter at our last um, Read by Grade 3 Literacy. Um, I make mistakes. I am very human. I um, I wish I didn't make mistakes. You know, then I wouldn't be human and I wouldn't learn. Um, <laughs> you know, we have to make mistakes to learn, I guess. Um, but so presume positive intentions. I really, I... I want you to get a lot out of this, and I hope that you'll um, gain a lot of great information and tools from this. Um, and there's a reason why I put you in breakout rooms, and there's a reason why I'm making you work, um, because I do feel like we're more fully engaged. So I'd like you to be fully engaged and contribute to your, to your learning and everyone else's learning. So Turn on your video if you can, because, you know, as much as I, I love staring at a blank screen and love staring at myself on the camera, it is nice when I can see your face. Um, be mindful and respectful. Yay, thank you for turning on your screen um, of others. So, you know, mute yourself unless you want to talk and you can unmute and talk and then be fully present. All right. Come on. Sorry, my PowerPoint and I are trying to get along and sometimes we are and sometimes we're not. Okay. Okay, so what the what of vocabulary. So if we look at, and a lot, most of you, if you're a literacy strategist or have a literacy background are familiar with Scarborough's reading rope. So if we look at those strands, um, Vocabulary is such an important part of comprehension, and we need that vocabulary acquisition. So it plays a fundamental role in the reading process, and it's critical to reading comprehension. Children learn the meanings of most words indirectly through everyday experiences with oral and written language. So think about that. They learn the meaning of most words indirectly. Um, and then 
it's our job to give them those other words through carefully designed instruction. Um, so there's a lot of content area vocabulary. There's a lot of like specific vocabulary for what we're doing, but most of um, what we're doing will be um, through indirect. And so we wanna leverage, leverage that um, instruction. Okay, so Pam, can I pick on you since I know you? <laughs> Would you read this quote for me? Yeah, um, as long as my dog doesn't bark. That's okay, he can bark. Okay. <laughs> Vocabulary is the knowledge of words and word meanings. As Stephen Stahl, 2005, puts it, vocabulary knowledge is knowledge. The knowledge of a word not only implies a definition, but also implies how that word fits into the world. Vocabulary knowledge is not something that can ever be fully mastered. It is something that expands and deepens over the course of a lifetime. Okay, so take a minute, <laughs> sit with it, okay? I know, make you think. Um, have you ever thought about that, how our vocabulary keeps growing? And how, you know, so I'm here at a literacy conference, so I'm obviously really into literature and thinking about how our vocabulary deepens and expands um, and books are one of the best ways to get that to happen. And what we're reading and what we're exposing our students to through literature is so critical for that vocabulary. Sorry, I forgot to advance my little notes here as so I'm following along with my own little notes. So how do we do this? And how do we get the most bang for a buck? Because we are short on time, as we know. And how are we gonna do this? So um, Dr. Tim Rosinski, who I absolutely love, um, if you ever get the chance to listen to him, to read his books, he's phenomenal. Um, and a lot of what I'm taking for this presentation comes directly from his, oh, can I show you his book? Building Vocabulary, it won't work because I'm on virtual mode, um, but his book, Building Vocabulary book. So the next quantum leap in vocabulary growth will come when the systematic study of Latin Greek derivations is embedded into vocabulary programs for the elementary grades. So how do we leverage this um, Latin and Greek roots? And I think especially like I do a lot of my work is with our English language learner, our multilingual learners. Um, and for those who are coming from a uh, Hispanic who speak Spanish, like boom, they have a huge advantage because that Latin language base, um, they, can, they can make meaning out of so many of these words by leveraging this strength for them. Okay, oops, sorry. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So in your note taker, if you go to your note taker, see, make sure I'm doing the right thing. Yes, okay. So in your note taker, um, there is a, so I'm going to, I have to stop sharing this and go to, sorry. <laughs> I'll figure this out before we're done with this presentation, okay. So we're going to be breaking out into a breakout room, but I wanted to give you the link for the article so that you have it for the breakout room and kind of give you instructions of what you're going to do. So um, in your note taker, let's see, it is the first article by, um, it's called the Latin Greek Connection. And maybe I'll, let's see if I can get this to share with you. Okay, hopefully that will work. Okay, did that work for you guys? You are all able to do that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put you in breakout rooms, really small breakout rooms so that you actually have to participate. I know, cause I'm that mean. Um, and you're gonna to go to page five in your in this um, article. And um, this article is fabulous. And it, and it really goes into depth how to come up with some strategies of teaching 
um, Greek and Latin roots. So I'm going to give you five minutes. You're going to go to page five in this handy dandy article. You're going to read this with your breakout room. And with your breakout room, you are going to go to page, once you've read through it, on page eight, there's some action steps. And I want you guys to, to come up with a way that you could use this with your students. So, or use this with teaching adults or like use this for yourself. How can it, this better help me in my understanding of um, language, but preferably since we're here for a teaching conference, it's ways that we can use this. Um, but you, I want you to start on page five because otherwise um, it's just not going to, to get there. Uh, we will we'll run out of time. So um, go ahead and yes, the Latin Greek connection, page five. Awesome. Thank you, Teresa. I'm glad you're going to participate. Um, so Kyle, I'll have you go ahead and put them in breakout rooms. Yeah, um, I'm going to open those now. Okay, so page five. And um, read through that together and come up with some ways together that you can put this to work. Thanks. And you should have the ability to, if you click on more and you click on breakout rooms, it'll pop it up and you can join a, a room. I can, I can hop in. Okay. Yeah, you can hop in, you can hop out. So oh, good. you can just kind of hover around and see how what, how the discussion okay. going. Because I'm having a, okay, so here we go. So more breakout rooms. And then you can click all the, like join a room. And, oh, awesome. Okay, thank you. You can see if people are actually talking. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Is Zoom? It's hard. It's hard on Zoom sometimes. So. I know. Well, and yeah, I'm using read aloud. Um, so I want time for you to to really dive into the read alouds and get that authentic vocabulary. So we're just gonna go through this really, really quick. But you can slow me down and um I can or chime in you know, go in the chat, whatever you need to do to slow me down, because I, I just want you to have time um, with the activity at the end. So context clues. Um, and this is something we hit heavily. I know when I taught third grade, um, in those upper grades, really helping students to um, use those context clues um, to find the meanings of words. So, you know, we've got our Greek and Latin, and let's look at um, synonyms, explanations, antonyms, definitions, and inferencing clues. So synonym clues, um, most basic, and a lot of authors put these in. I'm just telling, you know, kind of what explanation clue, giving that definition. Um, antonym clues, saying something the opposite. Marty is gregarious, unlike his brother, who is quiet and shy. So saying something is the opposite of something else. And then, of course, the definition clue, which Lemony Snicket is the master of the definition, <laughs> even though it may not be the um, dictionary definition, um, Lemony Snicket. I know sometimes when I'm reading it, I'm like, really? Do you have to tell me what this word means? But it's really fun and it's great for students who are growing their vocabulary to read these um, read these definitions as they're reading these, um, you know, at first the book, it appeared the Baudelaire orphans were still in the middle of the ocean, as all the children could see was a flat and wet landscape stretching out in all directions, fading into the gray morning mist, but as they appeared over the side of their ruined boat, the children saw that the water was not much deeper than a puddle, and this enormous puddle was littered with detritus, a word which here, me, here means all sorts of strange items. So, you know, finding those definition clues um, are great and inferencing clues. And those of us who, this is the hardest because our students come in with their own schema, with their own background knowledge and taking what we know and what the author tells us to create our own um, knowledge can really be a challenge. And um, so sometimes it's our job to build this background knowledge for them, to give them realia, to give them videos, to give them ways of building up their background knowledge so that they can um, create this. 
use these inferencing clues. Okay, so shades of meaning is another fun um, little game I like to do with my students. Um, and I have great resources for you on our note taker for all kind of fun activities you can do with shades of meaning. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go into the next jam board. And you guys are going to let me open up the next jam board. Yep. I will put the link in the chat. Do you also have it on your note taker? Um, you're going to choose a column and there's several different slides. There's all kinds of different things. And you're going to put things in order. So you're going to find a word. You're going to put things in order from like the least, like I'm upset, to I am livid. Like <laughs> which one's most? Um, so we're going to go in and we're going to play with the Jamboard again and do a little shades of meaning um, and get a little more pre precise with our vocabulary. And I think I'm not going to share the Jamboard. I'm just going to go over. Um, is everybody able to get in? I know sometimes if we have too many people, we can't. But I think we're OK as far as size wise. Kyle, how many people do we have? We have approximately 28. Oh, yeah, we're in good shape then. So yeah, if you go over into the Jamboard. And you can choose a word. And oh, I like this ginormous. Awesome. And we can get these out of here. And you have a clean copy of this also in your notes that you can take and use with your students or that you can take and create your own. Okay, um, Joyce. Yeah, I don't see where the Jamboard is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Um, it's in your notes, but I'll, it's in the chat as well. So if you can click on that in the chat, is that not working for you? Worked for me in the chat, but. Could you get it to work now, Joyce? Everybody else okay? All right. All right. Ooh, you guys are so good. These are so good. <laughs> mature, seasoned, ancient. I'm loving these. I'll just get rid of that. Yeah, and you can either like you can do it with sticky notes, you can do it with text boxes, whatever you want to do. Um, This is really fun. So thank you. I hope you guys are having a little bit of fun with that. So the next part, and um, this is really where my passion for this comes in, um, is, uh, and this also is Tim Rosinski, is word harvesting and using your read alouds, leveraging that read alouds. And this is my non-negotiable. That read aloud should be a non-negotiable. That's something that you do every single day with your students. Um, when you think about vocabulary acquisition and use, the benefits of the read aloud are just enormous. Um, with my own children, um, I raised them on Harry Potter. And I, I think about our vocabulary that we acquired from Harry Potter and what a valuable tool that was for my own children. Um, just just the value of actually, you know, expanding our vocabulary and 
because they're able to access words in a different way um, than they're able to access on their own. So once again, I'm going to make you work and read, and I'm so sorry to make you do that on a Saturday when you shouldn't have to work and read, but I'm going to make you because that's just how I roll. Um, but this is another quick, and this one's a lot quicker. This is just a quick article by Dr. Rosinski um, on word harvesting. And let's see. It is on your link called word harvesting. And And maybe what we'll do, let's... Reading is fun. So, and this this really delves more into like the importance of the read aloud. And I'm, I'm just gonna share my own experience with you and let you, um, then I'll let you go into a breakout room and discuss it with, um, with your peers. How are we doing on time? Kyle, how much time? We do you are have? looking at the end of the session is at the at 240. So 240. Okay. All right. So we should be good. Um so I'll give you about three minutes um to go into a breakout room and kind of talk about how you can use a read aloud. Um, so when the pandemic hit, my class was in the middle of reading Flora and Ulysses. And if you've ever read Florida and Ulysses, there's a lot of really good vocabulary in there. And one of the things that Dr. Rosinski recommends is that you have a read aloud word wall. And so, you know, in the classroom, we had our little poster and each day we'd put our word up and the kids would look up the definition and we'd put in our own words, you know. Um, but then, then the pandemic hit and we weren't together every day. Well, my class, because we're so engrossed in this book, we chose to meet every single day just so that we could do our read aloud every day. Even if we were just checking in and doing our read aloud, we did that. Um, but we wanted a way that we could then um, engage and still have our vocabulary word wall. So we were still getting this great, rich vocabulary from our read aloud. And um, the students would choose the word that was our vocabulary word for that day. And, you know, they'd they'd look it up and then they get to share it, you know, so they take turns who got to look it up and who got to share it. Um, and we came up with a, like, we just shared Google slides because at the time we were using Google classrooms. Um, but it was so powerful. Like they owned those words. They owned that reading. Um, so I'm going to give you, and I know it's not much time, but I'm going to, I'll give you three minutes um, in a breakout room. And um, Kyle, if you'll go ahead and throw them in there. That would be awesome. They are now open. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read that article and just discuss ways you can use the read aloud in your classroom for vocabulary. And this one, we're going to keep it pretty short. We'll keep it to a three minute just because we, yeah, I want to have, I want them to have. So on this um, video that I'm doing next, mm -hmm. um, you have to click share audio when, if you want it to play and to play through the, through the um, broadcast. Okay. So. I believe it's the little up arrow above share screen that will allow you to do that. Okay. Stop sharing that. Share
Okay, we've got people coming back. Great, welcome back. Awesome. So, who's going to be brave and share? Any ideas? Any ahas? What do you think? We were all very excited about the read aloud word wall. So thank you for that, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. I like the word harvesting. Um, when I was little, my dad used to say to me, whenever I would read something new, he would say, before you start reading, get out your dictionary and your, uh, back then it was called a synonym finder in the <laughs> 70s. This is a great thesaurus. And um, he said, this way, if you don't know the meaning of a word, you have those two books beside you where you can look up what the definition is. And you can also find alternative ways to say the same thing. So, Absolutely. you know, I had a college who, professor that used to say, read with the dictionary. Yeah, that was my dad. I mean, if I would ask him what something meant, it was always look it up. And <laughs> I'm so glad that he did that because it broadened my vocabulary. It gave me word origins and it just really made me fall in love with words. And that was when I was. I love that. I love that. Anyone else willing to share? I, I want to share. I teach foreign languages, word languages. And at the end of the week, I have this little game of sharing your favorite word of the week. And it might be something we learn in class. It might be something they heard during uh, Read Aloud or something that they learned uh, by themselves, right? And uh, they share and they say why it's their favorite. And um, it's very interesting because then there's a competition to find a word each week that the I others that. do not know. Yeah. I love that. Awesome. All right. Well, we are going to, I'm, and I'm praying this works. I'm just a little nervous just because it's hard when you're not home. <laughs> it's hard when you're not home and you don't have your, the same tech and everything else. So hopefully this works, but this is such a beautiful story that I'm praying it will work and the sound will work and all of that. But Feel free to unmute and yell at me if it's not working. Okay. And now, the word collector, written and illustrated by Peter Hamilton Reynolds. Collectors collect things. Some people collect stamps. Some people collect coins. Others collect rocks. Some collect art. Some collect bugs. Others collect baseball cards. Some people collect comic books. And Jerome, what did he collect? Jerome collected words. He collected words he heard. My trip to Peru was perfectly pleasant. Certain words caught his attention. He collected words he saw. Willow Tea Shop. Certain words jumped out at him. He collected words he read. Emerald. Certain words popped off the page. Short and sweet words. Spark, bloom, drift, dream, two syllable treats, treasure, motif, whisper, glimmer, hover, candid, and multi syllable words that sounded like songs. Geometry, guacamole, kaleidoscope. Wonderful. Symphony. There were words he did not know the meaning of at first, but they were marvelous to say. Aromatic. 
vociferous, effervescent. There were words whose sounds were perfectly suited to their meaning. Molasses, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Torrential, Smudge, Bellow. Jerome filled his scrapbooks with more and more of his favorite words. Jerome's collection grew blissful, timber, potential, everlasting, lore. Brilliant, harmony, breeze. Jerome's collection grew. He began organizing them, dreamy. I'm sorry, I'm gonna end it. It's such a good story though. I want you to read it all. I'm gonna to skip to the very end because I, I just like the very end is so good. Um, but I want you to have a little time to play. Harmony, <laughs> gaggle. Onomatopoeia, below, scurrying about so, collecting the end, words he, from the blue. She shares his words with the world and shares. Jerome had no words to describe how happy that made him. All right. But you have to love Peter Reynolds. But we need time to play, and this is really important. So um, we are going to get into the meat and potatoes. I want you to, you're going to, go in and the last jam board um and so i will open that up and share um that last jam board so here's what you're going to do you're going to go into that last jam board you're going to find a story that has a or has a passage that you could use for your grade level or anything, you know, whatever you want to work with. So, but you're going to find a passage, you're going to find some, a word, and then you're going to come over here at the end. I love Clementine. I'll do this. Um, so here at the end, so we have, um, and this is this is kind of the meat and potatoes of it, is getting in and um, getting your students to make meaning. So what I recommend our students do, and this is really the one I like the best, is. Um, because I, what I have them do is if you look here in the middle, so you put the word in English and then they put it in their own language. Um, and in this case, like prediction, prediction, not that I speak well, my Spanish is very poor, muy mal, but you can see how close those are and it helps them if they have that Spanish, the cognates are there. Um, but go ahead and find a word and then find a, um, jam, uh, open Jamboard and just put your word in there. And if somebody's already on that Jamboard and you can add your word to it, it's all good. Um, cause we only have about six minutes. So I, I, but I want you to, to go in, just find a word, just go into one of those books and find a word. Um, So,
Okay, Kyle, we have two minutes left. Is that right? That is correct. Two minutes. Okay. All right. So you guys keep working on that. I am just going to shift over here. background just to let everyone know that i did put the session survey in the chat so please make sure to do that before you go on to your next session okay then we'll what go are we on now so we're on Jamboard three. No, no, um, no. I, I mean, which session? I've... Oh, what session? This is session five. You're oh, almost done. thank you. You're almost thank done. you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and then I also have provided for you in your handout um, vocabulary choice, choice boards, um, and some an idea for just a virtual graffiti wall if you wanted to do that rather than have. Um, just putting it up on your wall, but I, I love the graffiti wall. I feel like um, there was so much to get through and so little time. Um, and I know I, I feel a little scattered just because I, I'm trying to do all of these things. But yes, this is room 20. Um, hopefully you were able to get something that you can take back with you and use with your students, use with your staff, use with um, your own vocabulary and um, if you take nothing else away I hope you're going to get into literature and find those vocabulary words increase your own vocabulary so thank you thank you Rachel thank you Danita thank you Nancy thank you Zoe is that right Zoe thank you awesome thank you so much